Animation is used to create living beings in the virtual world of a computer game. LEDWORKS Engine features a flexible skinning and animation system that supports animation transitions, blending, procedural interpolation, and allows use of ragdolls and other physics-based motion. Skinning and animation are usually used together but are not the same thing, and it's important to understand this distinction. Skinning is a technique whereby vertices are attached to bones. When a bone moves or rotates, attached vertices will maintain their position in normal relative to the bone. A vertex may be attached to one or more bones with a percentage weight per attachment, and it will be influenced by both. For example, a vertex on a character's elbow might be influenced 50% by the forearm bone and 50% by the upper arm bone. LEDWORKS Engine supports up to four bone attachments per vertex. Animation is a series of preset frames created by an artist in a modeling program. Animation is used to make characters appear to walk, run, jump, or perform other motions. A hierarchy of bones forms a skeleton, which acts in much the same way a human skeleton does. When bones are animated, vertices attached to them will morph, just as muscles and skin flexes when the underlying bones move. However, it doesn't matter where the motion comes from. When a bone moves or rotates, attached vertices follow. Therefore, skinning will work whether the source of the motion is animation, programmed movements, or physics motion, as in the case of a ragdoll character. For this tutorial, we're going to be using the crawler character. And this consists of the crawler.gmf file, which is the mesh that we're going to load in LEDWORKS Engine. Then we have a couple of diffuse textures and normal maps. This is the main character material, and if we open this in Notepad, we can see that it specifies the diffuse and normal map for the first two textures. And then here for the shader, we specify mesh bump map skin for the vertex shader, and mesh diffuse bump map specular for the pixel shader. And you'll notice for the shadow shader, we're using mesh shadow skin for the vertex shader and that's important because we want the shadow of course to match the rendered mesh this is unwrap 3d and this is an inexpensive UV mapping tool that can import and export nearly every 3d file format out there and it has really excellent support for animation so we're going to be using it for this tutorial. You don't have to have it, but it's a useful tool and uh, it's good to have an intermediate stage before you load assets in the engine. So you can see in yellow the skeleton of the character. And when I play the animation you can see that the vertices move to match the bones movement. And here on the right, we can look at the whole skeleton. Now, we can't expect every external modeling program to support our own conventions for the material system. So the way we're going to assign materials Let's see, we'll go to Properties, and go to Maps, and we can see here we have a diffuse texture assigned, and this is the crawler.dds texture. Now when the engine loads this file, it's going to see that this part of the mesh uses crawler.dds, and it's going to first look for a crawler.mat file, which we have. Now here's a program I've copied straight from the tutorial. And this is just going to load and display the animated mesh. And there he is. He's not moving or anything yet, but we can fix that. First I want to show you how 
skinning works when we just manually move the bones. So first I want to get one of the bones in the hierarchy and I'm going to use the find, int, find child command to do that. And I just type in the name of the entity I want to find in the hierarchy. And I want to get the head, so I'll just copy that and paste it here. And now I'm just going to add some keyboard control. So this should make it when I press the left and right keys it'll turn side to side and when I press the up and down keys the head will turn up and down. And we can see it's working and the skin of the character is stretching. So it doesn't matter where the motion is coming from, when the bones move, the skin will stretch. Now this program, copied from the article, will actually display animation. And it's going to use the animate command. And I want to explain all the parameters here. The mesh is obviously the mesh that we want to animate. But we can animate any mesh in the hierarchy that we want. The frame value tells it what frame to play. All animations are stored in a linear series of frames and we just specify a number and this will automatically be wrapped around the maximum number of frames. So let's say there's 10 frames. If we specify frame 14, the value will wrap around and it'll actually play frame 4. The blending parameter can be used to blend animations, and we'll get into that a little bit later in this lesson. And then finally, the recursive value just tells the engine to uh, animate all children of this mesh the same way. When we run the program, we can see this walk animation being played and now he's running and now he's idling which is just standing still and barely moving so you can see that it plays all the animations that the file contains but we want to play just one specific sequence at a time 